Hey, in this video I will cover electronics product compliance in the United States. So we're starting off by looking into FCC, UL, ETL, um, EPCA and also a few US state regulations. So number one, and, and this is a lot of importance and Amazon sellers assume that, oh yeah, um, I need an FCC certificate. Um, let's say that this, it's, it's just the start, but it is a requirement to ensure compliance with the various FCC parts, okay? Uh, part 15 being one of them, basically divides uh, devices as either intentional or unintentional uh, radiators. Mm. And yeah, this this definition in, 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 in turn depends on what sort of device you're placing on the market that you're importing and selling, okay? Now, intentional, that covers things like Wi-Fi enabled devices, Bluetooth, 4G, and so on, GPS, right? Um, devices used to communicate with other devices, or with wi wireless communications, okay? And then there's also unintentional radiators um, that are not designed for wireless communications but still have an impact because what FCC is really about is, is communications, okay? Um, it's, it's, it's really about communications rather than electrical safety. Um, I'm going to get to that in a bit. And you may also need to issue a, an SDOC, a supplier declaration of conformity covering the company name and address, product name, and also a list of standards, which you can get from a lab testing company. Okay, now that's just, that's, that's FCC, as I said, covers um, communications, more so than um, electrical safety, which is, is really the real risk here. Not all electronics are designed to be safe. It's shown it's blowing up all the time. Um, fire, um, fire is a big, like, a big risk, right? Uh, electrical shock. Uh, so there are a number of risks that you, as a company selling electronics, uh, need need to deal with, need to minimize. Now, the interesting thing in the United States is that. Electrical safety for many products is, is, is voluntary in the sense that these standards, UL, uh, UL stands for Underwriter Laboratories, it's, a, it's an organization, it's not a government body, it's, it's a private organization which develops its own standard. This is very different from the EU system where there are mandatory regulations that apply not just to communications but, but also to electrical safety uh, or heavy metals and electronics for example. Now. The thing though is that UL, their standards such as, yeah, just a few examples here, UL 1876, um, 2097, etc. You can search your website by the way, has become sort of like the de facto um, C mark of North America in a way. And the reason for this is that you can't really sell a non-UL tested, non-UL compliant product to a retailer in, 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 in the US. They're strict about that. So it's it's sort of the like reference point. It's it's what's expected. And also Amazon is strict about this. This started back in I think late 2015 when there was this issue with hoverboards being sold in the US. Well not just the US worldwide but in the United States, Amazon quickly took action and made it mandatory for the sellers to provide UL test reports. Problem was 95% of them couldn't because they didn't have any. So this, many of them were caught off guard because they made the assumption, well, if UL is voluntary, right, it means that I can just sell whatever crap that I can source online, I'm not going to mention any websites, but it's not like that. You're still liable, okay? So you're still taking a huge risk. And this is why UL is really the go-to place if you want to sell electronics in the United States. They also have different types of certification. I'm not sure if they have, even call it that, but UL listings. Um, 
basically verifies that a manufacturer as a whole is implementing certain UL standards for certain products, then you may have um, that there's also UL recognition which applies to specific products, machines in this case, and could also even com cover subsystems with components. And also UL classification which certifies that a specific product is compliant with UL standards. And then this of course testing services UL provides a wide range of testing services not only according to their own standards but also according to EN, IEC and so on and there's also UL mark which sort of serves the same purpose of, of the CE mark in, in the EU and as I said uh, Amazon is also getting stricter on this so you can actually find on, on the seller central you can actually find um, they, they reference UL standards for restricted products power banks and so on so uh, there's also another well framework developed by ETL. Uh, sorry, developed by Intertech and it's called ETL. And some of you may have seen the ETL mark. This is different in the sense that they don't develop their own standards, at least not as far as I know. Instead, they sort of developed ETL as as a compliance mark for the North American market, for the US and Canada. And what they do is that they make an assessment of, okay, which uh, ASTM, uh, ANSI, CSA, that's Canada, uh, and, and also UL standards may apply to this product, and, and they do a test according according to which standards may apply. This is not really needed in Europe, because it's already like, okay, these are the directives you have to follow, this is LVD, ROHS, etc. So there's, there's no need, uh, whereas in, in, in the US it's a bit more like, okay, um, you're liable, but you better figure out how to how to you know ensure that your product is safe. Um, so yeah, it can be it can be a bit tricky. And pff, a lot of as I said, a lot of importers make the assumption that okay, if it's all voluntary, why should I care? Well, you should because you're still you're still responsible for whatever you import. Now, okay, I t tend to get ahead of myself in these videos sometimes, but yeah, I, I sort of I already answered this question, right? Do I need to care if electronics, uh, if if these standards are not mandatory? Okay, yeah, I should should also learn how to read better. Yeah, it should say if the standards are not mandatory. Okay, so if they're not mandatory, should I care? Yeah, you should you should care for the reasons I just explained. Because you should care about others, right? Um, this is this is you don't want you don't want uh, uh, your power bank to explode in someone's face or your e-cigarette. You don't want to burn down a house, but also for the sake of protecting yourself, you don't want to be sued bankrupt. Okay, um, can I really rely on a test report provided by a supplier? And this is a big problem. Now, you may assume that okay, the North American market is big. My supplier should. They should have it figured out when it comes to compliance in, in North America. And the truth is that most manufacturers don't, like in, in, in China, which is the number one export country for electronics, right? Um, don't have lab test reports. But even if they do, it's very rare that you can actually use them. The thing is that even if they do have lab test reports, as I just said, they may only have those lab test reports for a few products, okay? And you can definitely not use a pre-existing test report on a new custom design product. You can't develop a new type of electronic widget, go back and take a test report from 2014 or whatever, and say that, yeah, this one proves that my product is safe. It doesn't work like that. So, in short, it's rare that you can use a pre-existing test report. Okay, um, in addition to that, there's also uh, EPCA, which covers uh, refrigerators, uh, microwave ovens, air conditioners, and yeah, other appliances, okay? Um, we don't really work with these products, so I never never dealt with testing or anything involving uh, EPCA, so I'm not gonna cover that in, in great detail, really. Okay, then there's also U.S. state regulations uh, covering electronics, and this is when it gets, f yeah, it can really get confusing. So much easier to deal with the EU system, despite the fact that the EU is not a country. Um, some U.S. states have um, decided to to uh, to implement ROHS, which is 
from the beginning a EU regulation which restricts heavy metal contents and also plasticizer the content now uh, in electronic components. And that covers New York, Florida, Illinois, and a number of other states. So you can, I think it's 19 or 18 or something like that. And it's not just the US, but it's also being adopted in Korea and India. I think China is also, they're also um, uh, going to, to um, yeah, legislate about this. Um, so yeah, you can say that it's, it's, it's de facto uh, required. That said, I never had, well, I'm, I'm not sure if, how many Amazon sellers and smaller businesses really follow that though. Anyway, and that's a different story. Okay, Illinois Lead Poison Prevention Act, which um, restricts uh, lead, com uh, lead content. Uh, California Energy Commission, which also, uh, like the previous one, covers uh, energy efficiency. All right, some other things we need to be aware of. Country of origin. This has nothing to do with electronics. It applies to all consumer products in, in the US. So um, most likely made in China, maybe made in Vietnam, depending on origin. CA Prop 65 um, restricts substances, which may be contained in, in, in uh, plastic casing. Okay, in the plastic casing of the, um, of the electronic product. So it's not just about electronics, electronic product related uh, requirements, but you may also need to look into secondary requirements that apply broadly to, to all consumer products and also packaging. Okay, there are heavy metals restrictions in a number of states that, that apply to, to the packaging materials and also bag suffocation for a number of products. All right, if you want to learn more, you can go and sign up for uh, our free product compliance information software. So you just go to this URL, compliancegate.com slash free, and get your free account right now.